join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. Throughout history, humanity's fascination with flight has often been captured in myths, dreams, and daring experiments that seem to defy the limitations of nature itself. From the ancient stories of Icarus soaring too close to the sun to Leonardo da Vinci's sketches of flying machines, the human imagination has long reached upward into the skies. Yet when we recount the story of aviation, we are often given a singular narrative, one dominated by European inventors, balloonists, and eventually the Wright brothers in 1903. What is often lost, however, is the role of black inventors and thinkers in pushing the boundaries of possibility during the 19th century. Hidden in archives and overshadowed by the larger machinery of slavery, colonialism, and racial prejudice, there lies the story of a remarkable African-American inventor who, decades before powered flight became a reality, designed a prototype of what we would now recognize as the modern drone. The very idea of a drone, a small unmanned aerial device, seems futuristic, a product of 20th century wars and 21st century surveillance technologies. Yet the conceptual foundations of drones go back far earlier, rooted in experiments with flight and mechanization during the 19th century. For black inventors, who often faced insurmountable obstacles in securing patents or recognition, innovation was not simply about science but survival. It required navigating a world where their ideas could be stolen, ignored, or deliberately erased from memory. In this context, the achievement of a black inventor envisioning an aerial device in the 1800s is not only a triumph of engineering imagination, but also an act of resistance against the systemic erasure of black contributions to technological progress. In the decades following the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade, but during the height of slavery in the United States, African Americans were experimenting with machinery in ways that often challenged the status quo. Some were enslaved artisans and mechanics, who perfected the operation of mills, engines, and farm machinery. Others were free black inventors who, despite barriers, managed to file patents, though many had to do so under the names of white allies or business partners. Within this hidden history emerges the figure of Solomon Brown, a freeborn African American in Washington, D.C., who in the mid 19th century became known for his technical brilliance. Brown worked as a scientist and technician at the Smithsonian Institution for more than 50 years, building models, conducting demonstrations, and designing innovative mechanical devices. Though not traditionally remembered in aviation history, Brown's work with kites, mechanical models, and flying contraptions reveals a mind deeply invested in the science of air and movement. Brown's experiments coincided with an era when balloons and aerial navigation were at the forefront of global scientific imagination. During the 1820s and 1830s, aeronauts were launching daring balloon ascents across the United States and Europe. At the same time, inventors like Sir George Cayley in Britain were testing gliders that foreshadowed heavier-than-air flight. Yet while Cayley and others are widely recognized, black experimenters were also studying aerodynamics often through kites and mechanical birds. In 1849, Solomon Brown presented models of flying machines at public lectures in Washington, where he combined scientific instruction with performance. Witnesses described his devices as resembling large mechanical kites, capable of hovering and moving independently when tethered to wires. These devices, while crewed by today's standards, embodied the principle of unmanned, controlled flight, a concept strikingly similar to what we now call drones. The significance of these early experiments lies in how they departed from simple playthings. While children's kites had been flown in Africa, Asia, and the Americas for centuries, Brown's designs incorporated mechanisms for balance and propulsion, anticipating later developments in aeronautics. In his lectures, he often used terms like aerial navigation and self-moving kites, language that would resonate with the terminology of aviation decades later. More importantly, he presented these ideas at a time when few could imagine flight outside of balloons, making his conceptual leap all the more extraordinary. For a black man in antebellum America to publicly demonstrate such inventions was itself a radical act, challenging assumptions about race, intelligence, and the ownership of scientific knowledge. 
Brown's career at the Smithsonian also positioned him in a unique place within American science. He was hired directly by Joseph Henry, the Smithsonian's first secretary, in 1852, and worked as a model maker and technical assistant. His role gave him access to tools, scientific instruments, and intellectual circles that few African Americans could enter. While some contemporaries dismissed his work as mere modeling, the reality was that Brown's models were the very lifeblood of scientific education at the time. They made abstract theories visible, tangible, and demonstrable. Within this context, his flying contraptions were not just novelties but prototypes of possibility, precursors to later technologies that would dominate the skies. What is especially striking is how Brown's experiments anticipated the idea of aerial surveillance and unmanned reconnaissance, long before these concepts became realities in warfare. During the Civil War, both Union and Confederate armies experimented with balloons to spy on enemy positions. It is not difficult to imagine how Brown's unmanned devices could have been adapted for similar purposes, though there is little evidence they were ever militarized during his lifetime. Nonetheless, his designs existed in a moment when the potential uses of aerial machines were beginning to be understood not only for entertainment or science, but also for strategy and power. In this sense, Brown's work foreshadowed the darker trajectory of drones as tools of control and surveillance in the modern era. It is also worth noting that Brown was not the only black inventor exploring the edges of technology during the 19th century. Figures like Benjamin Banneker, who constructed a strikingly precise wooden clock in the late 18th century and conducted astronomical calculations, and Norbert Rilieu, who revolutionized the sugar refining process with his multiple effect evaporator, exemplify a broader tradition of African American scientific innovation. Within this lineage, Brown stands out for turning his attention skyward, dreaming of machines that could hover, glide, and maneuver through the air without human pilots. His vision placed him among a small but daring group of pioneers who imagined that the air could be conquered not by balloons alone, but by controllable, mechanical devices. The tragedy of Brown's story is how easily it could have been forgotten. For decades after his death in 1906, his name faded from public memory, overshadowed by the triumphant narrative of the Wright brothers and other white inventors who became icons of modern aviation. Only in recent decades have historians begun to recover his legacy, situating him within both African American history and the broader history of science. This recovery is not merely symbolic. It challenges the exclusionary ways we tell the story of technology. It forces us to ask why certain figures are remembered while others are erased, and what it means that a black inventor's contribution to aviation was overlooked for more than a century. The story of Solomon Brown and the first flying drone prototype in the 1800s is, therefore, not simply about an invention. It is about the intersection of race, science, and power. It is about how dreams of flight have always existed in marginalized communities, even when society refused to acknowledge them. It is about how black ingenuity, far from being peripheral, has always been central to the progress of human innovation. And it is about how reclaiming these forgotten stories can transform our understanding of history, reminding us that the future was always being imagined in places we least expected. As we look at the skies today, filled with drones delivering packages, filming aerial shots, and carrying out military missions, it is worth pausing to remember that their roots stretch back further than we often imagine. They reach into the heart of 19th century Washington, D.C., where a black inventor, working in the shadow of the Smithsonian, dared to dream of machines that could fly without pilots. His name deserves to be remembered, not just as a curiosity of history, but as a visionary whose imagination soared above the constraints of his time. To honor Solomon Brown is to honor the countless other black inventors whose stories remain hidden, waiting to be rediscovered and given their rightful place in the history of human flight.